All right, so in the last video, we basically completed the foundation slash slab plan. It shows us where the footing is, the foundation, how our slab's going to be cut. We annotated it, we dimensioned it, and we added a title block to it. So the next step that we want to go through is start working on the floor plan. And the big question right now is how the walls, the framed walls, two by four walls, are going to line up with this foundation wall. So there's a couple different things that we need to look at. There's a couple different options. And I'm going to switch over to my model space. And we're going to basically just copy this whole plan. There's a lot of different ways that we could do this, but for right now, we're just going to copy this plan. I'm going to get rid of these dimensions. And I'll get rid of this text as well. So I can do this. I can use the lay ISO command. And the settings for that would be off. And then I select the layers that I want to isolate. It turns everything else off. I can erase these, and then I can use the lay on command to turn them back on. So I basically have a copy of my foundation plan without any annotations. So the next step is to start looking at the wall in section view. So what I can do is I can use the construction line command, which is XL. Before I do that, I'm going to make a layer for it. LA, make, XL. I'm going to make that yellow. And after I have that layer made, I'm going to go through and add some construction lines. So the construction lines for, are simply lines that I'm going to use for orthographic projection. So I'm going to type in XL, and I have the option, a few different options here. I'm going to choose vertical, and I'm just going to choose these endpoints, and these lines are going to represent the foundation and the footing in section view. So I'm just going to zoom down here a little bit, and I'm going to start drawing. And I'll switch this to, I, I think I'll just leave it on XL for right now, just so I can see it. Actually, I'll switch to the layers that I'm going to create. So for my footing, I'll put it on that layer. And I'm basically going to just start out in a random location. And what I'm doing with section view is basically cutting through the wall from the top to the bottom and showing it from the profile view or side view. So I'm lining it up with the floor plan view and this view is going to be a vertical view of part of the wall. So this would represent where the footing meets the ground. So I know th that my footing is going to be 8 inches thick so I'm going to offset 8 inches and I know that this line and this line represent my footing. So at this point, I can fill it. And that represents my footing. So these two lines are going to represent my foundation. So I'm just going to click on those, and I'm going to change those to the foundation layer. And while I'm at it, I'll clean this up, change those to the footing layer. I know my foundation is going to sit on top of my footing, so I'm going to select this line, the top of my footing, as a cut line with the trim command. And I'm going to trim that out, and this is the start of my foundation. So the next thing that I need to know well, the next thing that I need to pay attention to is the depth of my footing. So 
in the design criteria, we established that the frost wall, or the depth of the footing, the depth of the frost, needs to be at least 44 inches. So I'm just going to start out at this point. I'm going to start out at the midpoint of my footing because I don't want to take my frost, if the frost is at 44 inches, I don't want the, the bottom of my footing to be right at the frost line. I want it to be below the frost line. I'm going to start out in the middle. I'm just going to draw a line off to the side and I'm going to offset that up 44 inches. Okay. So I know I have to come up to at least there with my concrete blocks. Now the next thing that I have to pay attention to, and this would represent the ground line, the next thing that I have to pay attention to is my CMUs or my concrete blocks need to come up eight inches above ground level so that any rain or snow does not get into the wood structure that would be up here above the foundation. So I'm going to offset this up eight inches. Now, the thing is, I don't know if this works out with the modular dimensions for the block. So the block are going to be eight inches high. So I could simply, I could do the math, or I could simply offset eight inches up, trim those off, and I could show the joints of the block in there. I'm going to do this again. I'm going to offset up. And I'm going to offset them up until I get to that point. So it worked out perfectly. This would be the top of my foundation. This would be grade. So I'm just going to leave the grade line in right now. And grade is just another uh, word to use where the ground would be finished off, where the ground level would come up to. And I'm going to use, I'm just going to delete this. I'm going to trim those off. So that represents my footing and my foundation. I end up with six courses of concrete blocks. So with my ortho on, I'm going to move this up closer and show something like that. Alright, so then the next thing is I have to decide whether I want to pour my slab up to this concrete block or if I'm going to pour my slab over this concrete block. So if I pour it over the concrete block, and we'll just show that real quickly, let's say I have a five inch slab. If I pour it over top of that, then on the outside of my garage, I'm going to see this seam this joint right here. So there's a couple different things that I could do with that if I want to choose this option. The one thing would be to cover the entire outside, the exposed outside, with a quarter inch thick of parch, which is just cement that covers up the outside of that. And that would help, not only would that look better, but it would also help shed water away from this, make this a more waterproof feature. You wouldn't have any expo exposed blocks. So that's one option. Another option would be to simply put our slab down here.
and have it butt up to this. Now if I do this, the issue becomes this. My wall, first of all, my slab is eight or is going to be five inches higher than my ground level. So I would either have to build something up to this, a ramp up to this, or I would need to move it down to this point, to grade level. So if I move it down to grade level, now the issue becomes this. I have this 8 inch block on the inside of my garage, and then I have a stud wall that does this. Just so that you can visualize that, on the inside of the garage, right here, I would have an 8 inch block the whole way around, and then I would have a ledge where my wall ends up being. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both. And we still have one more option to go with. We could also, and it needs to be noted too that in this option here, you still have to build a ramp up and now the ramp becomes eight inches. So I could put a half block in here which would essentially lower this slab down four inches. And this would just be a four inch cap block. So that's definitely a possibility as well. Now you're back to having an eight inch ramp going up to this. So then I would basically build a wall that would come up here. Like that. Then my next option is very similar. where I could have basically this wall or actually I would start out with this option and this wall could start down there So my slab is still sitting on top of the concrete block, but this wall, the framing wall, is going to go to the exterior. Now this slab would go up against the framing wall. Now if we do this, now we're still, we're back to being four inches from the framing to the ground level. So this would need to go back up to a full course. So there's our three different options. Just to reiterate, this one right here, this gets poured on the slab, or the, the wall gets built on top of the slab, and we have to have an 8 inch ramp up to this gets parged on the outside. This one has a ledge on the inside with the concrete slab basically floating on the gravel base. And this one has a ledge for the concrete to sit on but has the wall ending up like this. Alright, so after looking at those different options, 
weighing the advantages and disadvantages, we decided to roll with with this wall right here. And we can go through and delete these. The next thing that we have to pay attention to is how our stud wall is going to line up with the exterior of the wall. So right now, and I'm going to delete that part because it's literally going to be about an eighth of an inch thick. And right now, if I laid it out like this, this is my two by four stud, three and a half inches wide. So on the inside, I may put something at drywall. And on the outside, I'm going to add OSB for my sheathing. So the two different options I have now is this. I can either lay it out like that. Or I could lay it out like this. So I could either make this OSB flush with the outside of the slab, like that, or I could have it extend out past, like this. So most contractors, whenever they build houses, they like to do it like this. I feel like the biggest problem with this this layout right here is that water, this is the drainage plane. So you're going to have some Tyvek right here. So this will become your drainage plane. Water will get behind your siding. It'll drain down this wall and once it hits this point right here it's going to have a place that it wicks back in. It's going to use the capillary feature of water where it's going to work its way back into your wall. If I use the other option, I can extend that OSB down past an inch And now it has a natural drip edge. And if it does work its way back to here, it's going to work its way down through. And this is going to be covered with parch. So I like to work with this. And whenever you're building a house, it has a lot of other options, or really good features as well, where it ties the entire wall structure together vertically. So. Once, now that we've decided to rule with this, I can go ahead and delete this one. And what I can do is create a new layer. So I'm going to make a layer called A-Wall. I'm going to make that color 11. And did something wrong there dash layer make a dash wall one more time all right so I made a new layer called a dash wall and what I can do right now is I'm only going to show these two lines in the plan view for that wall, at least for right now. So I'm going to draw, draw this line up, and we need to make sure this is still all lined up. So I'm going to draw my line down. It's lined up with my foundation still. So I'm going to draw this line up here. And you can see it falls right on top of my foundation. Draw a line up from there. And I could use my construction line feature too. We'll just go ahead and do that. XL, V, pick that and that. And now 
I have my stud layers on there, my framing wall layers. Okay, so the next step to this would be, now I know exactly where this, I know that this is lining up with that, so I could just offset these. If I want to use orthographic projection, I could copy this. I could rotate it. I could pick it up again. And I could move it from the outside line for my foundation to the outside line of my foundation. And that's all over top of this, so I move again. And whenever it asks me to select objects, I just type in P for previous, make sure my ortho is on, and I can drag it out there. And I can do that again. Copy. Rotate. Move previous from the outside edge of my foundation to that point. Move previous. And this one I should be able to just mirror from my midpoint. Make sure it lines up. Everything looks good. And the last one, I'm going to mirror it as well. I'm going to select all of that. I'm going to mirror from my midpoint of my wall. I'm going to double check to make sure that it lined up where it's supposed to. And right now, what I, I can simply lay ISO. Turn everything else off, and then I can fill it. I've got some double lines underneath there from doing that twice that I can erase. Make sure there's no double lines. Okay, so now I have the layout for my floor plan. Turn those layers back on by using the lay on command. I'm going to keep this one right here, but delete everything else. And the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to draw lines where those openings are going to be. Because I'm going to need openings in my framing wall as well. Turn off, lay off these layers. I'm going to move this off of here because I don't need what's underneath anymore. Turn everything on. Erase this. Move this back over in this area. And then I can use my extend command which is the opposite of my trim. So I pull down the trim menu, extend. The first thing that it asks me for is what objects do I want to extend to? Or one of my boundary edges. I want to extend these lines to this one. I'm going to pick the wrong one. And then I can go through and choose all those lines and it extends to there, to that boundary edge. And then I'm going to trim those out. And this is the start of my floor plan.